On September 22, 2013, early in the morning, residents of Paladin Club Apartment in Wilmington were alarmed by shouting in a shower of more than 20 pops that quickly followed. Just outside the apartment, Joseph Connell and his wife, Olga Connell, just returned from celebrating Olga's 39th birthday. This would be her last. Joseph had a bullet hole in the back of his head and passed away on the scene, while Olga had a bullet hole in the face. She later gave in to her injuries and passed away in the ambulance. The couple still had their valuables with them. Wallet, purse, phones, and a diamond ring on Olga's finger. This didn't seem like a case of a robbery, but the couple was targeted. Only three months prior, the newlyweds had been married during a destination ceremony in the Virgin Islands, and Joseph's mother, Mickey Keller, remembered them as the perfect couple. They were always so considerate of each other, she said. Olga moved from Russia to America with her ex-husband before they got a divorce. When she met Joseph online, the both of them were completely taken with each other. Everything was just beautiful and perfect between the two of them. But, there was a problem between those two and Joseph's sister, Kelly Connell. Joseph proposed to Olga with the Connells' $20,000 family heirloom ring that was promised to Kelly. The ring was eventually returned to Kelly, but it was only after the newlyweds replaced the diamonds with Zircon. That really made Kelly furious. In her interview with the police, she openly admitted to the anger she had for her brother, and even offered to show the text exchange with her brother. My brother was very, very, very irate to me. Okay, From that yeah. moment on, you can read his text. From that moment on, my brother was pure mm -hmm. evil to me, accusing me of sending numerous, numerous, numerous threatening texts to his wife. Are you not having to me or something? No, 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 we're just trying to get in the weeks before the shooting, an unknown suspect had burglarized the Connell's home, and in one text exchange, Olga appeared to accuse Kelly of being the culprit. Speaking with police, Kelly denied having anything to do with the break-in and said that on the day of the homicides, she had been recovering from a breast cancer treatment. Police then spoke to Kelly's fiancé, Garrett Catalano, who corroborated Kelly's story and floated the theory that Joseph, who was the co-owner of an auto service shop, could have had his life taken in a drug deal gone wrong. I know Joey's been selling steroids, Catalano claimed. And then the next thing you know, stuff like this happens. Joseph's partner, Christopher Rivers, also attested that Joseph was a steroid user and was selling steroids from their auto repair shop. I just want to talk to you a little bit about your partner, uh -huh. your history with him, and then what kind of stuff he's got himself tangled up in recently. Ultimately, when we're all said and done, I promise me you won't repeat it, Thomas. Yes. He was told about the homicide. Oh my God. At 11, I went down there. It was around, I guess it was around 10.30. But I didn't have my ID on me, so I had to drive all the way home. When he knew of his illegal activity, he asked Joseph to put a stop to it. Finally, I, was, I wasn't there one day, and the guy, the other guy that works for me comes up to me and goes, Joe's selling drugs out of the back of the shop. 
and I was looking for one. So I searched the shop, found them, and said to them, get them out. I don't want it here. I'm not losing the freaking place over this What was he selling? Steroids. Seem pretty convinced that that's what this is all about. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's probably what it's about. Mm -hmm. Why would you say that? What else would it be about? For a brief moment, the detectives considered that the financial motive on the diamond ring tension between the siblings could have been the motive for the homicides. But Kelly had a very good alibi, she was recovering from her breast cancer treatment. Another twist was, a drug dealer named Harry Cook pointed the finger back at the Christopher Rivers. According to Harry, Christopher had insinuated that he wanted Joseph dead, but Harry made it clear he wanted no part in it. He claimed he had a great relationship with Joseph. Christopher was unhappy about Joseph's new attitude, in his police interview. He said, I guess the last six or eight months, I noticed he stopped working, stopped coming to work. He'd leave early, people start stopping by the shop. He buys a $100,000 car. Figures you see somebody every day, 12 hours a day more than you see your wife. So we were pretty much best friends. When was the last thing you did together? When was the last time you saw him? Well, I was together Friday with him. And then Saturday I was supposed to meet him down with everybody at the bar. He's a great guy. There's nothing that he would ever do to make anybody angry, ever. How'd they tell you he was killed? They didn't at first. They asked me a bunch of questions, and I had no clue why I was there. And you wouldn't tell No. Why'd you go with them? I figured it, but had something to do with. I don't know. I just went. <laughs> I've never been in trouble before. I just kind of went along with what they said. What did they say? To, what did they say? They just said I need to come down to Newcastle County and talk to them. all kinds of questions. I don't remember exactly what they were asking, but anybody, pretty much everybody he knew, they were asking him. All kinds of questions. Much. Every, I was just asking questions about everybody he knew, his our friends, every friend, but they never led to believe, to believe anything like that. Before we go any further, can he said, "I guess you're wondering why you're here," and I said, "Yes." And they said, "Joe Connell and Olga were murdered last night at their house," and I just didn't believe it. I still don't believe it. I gave them the surveillance. I surveillance at the house and the shop. They took all that. They have all that. That before they told you he was. Killed? No, no, no. After, I told them they could have it. They could come. Did he tell you how he was killed? No, they didn't tell me anything. We found drugs in your building. Joe's dead. You're responsible. For what? The drugs or his death? The drugs. Did you ever mess with steroids? Does it look like well, I have? Well, I looked at your picture on Facebook. <laughs> that guy was Joe Bolka. I'd rather not answer that question, but I'm Did sure. Did he lift weights? I'd rather not answer that question. Now, your lawyer's already said apparently his partner is, I mean... I'm, I'm not going to badmouth my best friend. But if your, lawyer, your lawyer's already said apparently his partner was dabbling in steroids. I'm asking, did you know that he, did you know anything about him in steroids? Mm, I'd rather not answer that. Um... Did you know that there were steroids in the building? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Did you do anything that night? Did you go out anywhere? I was at work and then I went straight out. Behind Joseph's back, Christopher accused Joseph of embezzling money out of their joint venture to fund his lavish life with his wife. But the truth was, it was Christopher in a bind, he was swamped with a huge personal debt. Both Christopher and Joseph signed a $1 million life insurance policy each, for the mortgage on the auto shop. To be the sole collector on it, he needed to get rid of the Connell couple. Ironically, after blaming Joseph, Christopher himself was a drug addict. To maintain their innocence, he and Christopher got themselves a strong alibi for the night of the double homicide. Christopher was recorded on CCTV pacing in his own house, while Joshua was working an overnight shift. While at-home surveillance footage proved Rivers was at his house the night of the Connell slaying, 
police noticed the business partner exhibiting some odd behavior. Throughout the evening, Rivers was glued to his cell phone and constantly pacing up and down the hallways of his home. Police then accessed Rivers' phone records and learned he had all this deleted material around the time of the shootings, Leonard said. Investigators also discovered that Rivers was in significant debt, which stemmed from personal finances unrelated to the business. Christopher planned to use the diamond ring conflict and the confusion on the burglary to frame Kelly. After the homicides, he attempted to bring down Joseph's character, being a steroid user and ex-convict. Phone records revealed that Rivers had been texting a convicted felon named Joshua Bay on the night of the murders, and that Bay had been communicating with a man named Dominique Benson, who then got in touch with another man named Aaron Thompson. Christopher hired his drug dealer, Joshua Bay, to take his friends' lives, Joseph and Olga. Christopher's phone records showed deleted texts and calls made to Joshua, including text messages revealing Joseph's location on the night of the homicides. When questioned, Joshua, a former FBI informant, spilled the truth to get himself a plea deal. Did Chris ever call you and say, I changed my mind, I don't want to do this? No. No. What? I take it from the conversations we had that it's been just the opposite. Yeah. Hurry up. Persistent. Yeah, real persistent, real persistent. According to him, he received a $5,000 down payment to hire two hit men, Dominique Benson and Aaron Thompson, to take the couple's lives. He was expecting another $60,000 upon completion. It was a cold-blooded, premeditated double homicide for money. The first gunman, Aaron Thompson, was found guilty of two counts of first-degree homicide and weapons infraction. He was sentenced to life in prison. The second gunman, Dominic Benson, was found guilty of first-degree conspiracy and sentenced to five years, but the juries could not come to a verdict on the homicides and weapon charges, because he was not willing to do it, at the last minute. Joshua Bay pleaded guilty to conspiracy of the homicides, and with his plea deal, he was sentenced to five years in prison. Christopher Rivers was found guilty of two counts of first-degree homicide, two counts of possession of a firearm, during the commission of a felony, first-degree conspiracy, and first-degree criminal solicitation. He was sentenced to life in prison. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see a certain video on something, leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.